On April, Sunday, April 17th, 2011, Michael Malley's wife, Pat, and Mike's children, John and Megan, lost a wonderful and beloved husband and father. It is our most honored privilege today to pay a seemingly small tribute to someone who meant so much to so many people, both within the Department of Corrections and within the Rutland community. It's been a month, less than a month, since Rutland Probation and Parole District Manager Mike O'Malley died. The sense and magnitude of our loss prevails in many, many ways. To Mike's Rutland staff who are gathered here today, the shock of Mike's death continues to be profound and often non-ceasing. But we also know that we cannot imagine the totality of the loss that impact to Pat, to Megan, and to John. We're so grateful that you could join us today. In remembering Mike, we, the Department of Corrections employees, want to acknowledge a career that spanned over 36 years in the field of corrections. Mike began his career in the state of Massachusetts, where he spent seven years with that department. He spent a total of 29 years with the Department of Corrections in Vermont. He was a superintendent of the Marble Valley Correction Facility for 10 years. He was the Department Security and Operations Manager for eight years and the District Manager of the Rutland Probation and Parole Office for 11 years. I was recently able to give Mike an outstanding evaluation. In many ways, the evaluation marked a Lifetime Achievement Award. Mike seemed shocked when he received the evaluation and the outstanding rating. He said that the only time he ever got evaluations in the past was when he was in trouble. <laughs> Mike and I laughed out loud over that comment. Mike had a wonderful sense of humor and was an outstanding storyteller. We always ended our times together in laughter, despite what the topic and the conversation had been previous. My comments in that evaluation were reflective of the outstanding contributions that Mike made within the criminal justice community, the very high esteem that Mike's staff enjoy within the community because of his conscientious oversight and attention to public safety. I ended the evaluation by stating my appreciation for Mike's lifetime support and willingness to improve both the lives of his staff and the offenders that he was charged with supervising in the community. Mike's dedication to his profession was unparalleled. Lucy Stevens is a longtime Rutland probation and parole officer employee who just retired after 36 years, could not be here today. But she wrote in her retirement letter that Mike's effective leadership, management, and interpersonal abilities were key factors in the successful development of Rutland Probation and Parole staff and operations and contributed to my own positive experience. I'm sure that the Rutland staff members who are gathered here today would loudly echo those sentiments. Lucy wrote this today for this particular tribute. Mike was incredibly loyal, caring, and nurturing. He was also very smart and practical. He always cared deeply about the DOC. Its best interests and needs were always uppermost for him. He was equally concerned and passionate, both personally and professionally, about the best interest and needs of the area that he served. He gave great amounts of time and work, applied effectively to serve the area. Sometimes the needs and best interests of the DOC and the local area might not coincide. But Mike used his skills and dedication to find and keep the balance. Mike truly understood that personal personnel are real people with real lives and needs. He understood that family and personal lives do not always balance neatly and easily with work life. And he always was the first to actively and practically help any employee struggling with that balance. Mike always had our backs. When you know that you have done that solid foundation as your rock, you can safely go out and do the best job possible. I've been spending time in the Rutland office recently and uh, most recently, uh, Pat and Megan uh, came by the office to take out some of Mike's personal items, like the photos of Pat, Megan, and John, and some of his personal treasures. And, and speaking of treasures, Pat, Megan, and John were his treasures. But looking around the office, um, it was easy to see the things that mattered most to Mike. 
Under the uh, glass on his desk were two Red Sox tickets. And when you look and think about two Red Sox tickets, you know that one's was Mike's and one's was his son John's. Two tickets that represent a father and son game and represent the bond that they had and the interests that they shared. In one drawer were stacks of old photographs and of career employees. They kept them in a drawer. And you look back on those and because they were so important to Mike. For, for Mike, each one of those photos represented a story. Some of those stories were fond memories, and some were more challenging. One quality, that, however, that staff could always count on was Mike's understanding, his compassion, and in many cases, the opportunity for a second chance. Looking around the office are unmatched chairs, a box of staff DOC shirts, and most importantly, there are no frills in that office. But that was Mike. Those things weren't important to him. And he was always conscientious about the department budget, and most particularly his budget. When you tried to take a position from him, that's when his passion came out. Most significantly, though, for me, was something that I found lying on the table in his office. And that was the Department of Corrections values plaque. And we think about our values, responsibility, commitment, integrity, judgment, creativity, enthusiasm, and compassion. Those are the department's values that we as the employees continuously strive to achieve. For many staff, attainment of those attributes is a lifetime journey. For Mike O'Malley, however, those attributes were a destination, a character destination that Mike arrived at many years ago. Rather than remembering our collective loss today, however, we wish to celebrate the many gains, the many positives that Mike left with us. I'd just like to ask Chris Dinan, who's a program supervisor in the Rutland office, to come up and share a couple of those memories before we present the plan. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, I, really, I must say that I, I regret that we'll never get to roast Mike because it really would have been a roasting. I mean, there's so many stories, stories that frankly, I can't tell at, in this venue. I've, I've shared some stories, you know, with Meg and Pat, and uh, I was just remembering one that I don't think I've really told many people about Mike, and uh, of course there was the initial, my, my meeting with Mike, I'd been interviewed by Stu Robinson and Anita Carbonell, and I think I was kind of getting the nod from them, but I had to go meet Mike. So the first time I meet Mike, he, I had to do and he's looking at my resume, and, Tell me why I shouldn't see a flashing red light. <laughs> so, you know, that's my introduction to Mike. And then within, you know, but we were friends. I mean, we're, he was my boss for the most part, but he also felt like a peer. But, you know, when you're friends with your boss, it's like a delicate balance. But we did things. He'd ski, I'd snowboard. You know, we'd, we'd be on a sailboat. We'd play racquetball. Of course, uh, he, he stomped me every time. So that didn't last very long. I kind of got sick of getting, you know, beaten, but, and one time I, you know, I just tried to hit it as hard as I could right at the back of his head, you know, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to get him, I came pretty close, so I just went, whoosh, and he, he turned around and said, you know, I'm going to remember that, you know, so, Mike was, was just an incredible guy in a lot of ways, and he really, you know, we, we, in a way, we can't compare our loss to the loss of the family, obviously, losing their husband, their father, their, their brother, their, you know, but there's a com comparison to be made as well. Uh, he was like a father figure in that office. He, he really was. Um, and so father relationships with fathers are complicated. I mean, there's, there's the disciplinarian, there's the author authoritarian, there's the directive, kind of maybe, you know, there's that side of it. But then there's that other side, the support, the love, and he really did have people's back. He had my back a few times, I know that. And uh, you know, I really appreciated that about him. So we, are gonna, we, we do miss him. It left in a huge void. I think, you know, then Clom and I drove up today and talked talk a little bit about Mike. And, you know, it's like he's still with us. He, he really is like he's still here. And for us to think like, OK, you know, we're alive. We're more real than he is. He is very real. He continues to be real. He's going to be real. 
certainly in the lives of his family forever. I mean, I'm never going to forget him. I'll, I'll have to keep some of my stories to myself. Um, there was one more that I'll share with you. And again, this was early on in my tenure, and there was a lot of O'Malley stories. And frankly, that's who he was to me, O'Malley. He wasn't Mike. I called him O'Malley to his face. I called him O'Malley when I talked about him behind his back or whatever. But, you know, he was O'Malley to me, which is really notable because my best friends, are, are, I call them by their last name. And I don't even know where that came from exactly, but, you know, it wasn't like he was a best friend because there was that balance between boss and friend. But, you know, there was always that respect with Mike. I mean, you could, obviously he and I didn't always see eye to eye. You know, he had that aspect of he was pretty, you know, he took a position and he was pretty, you know, pretty strong on it. And so we wouldn't always see eye to eye, but there was always that respect. As Keith said, maybe just end with a, you know, a little story or, a, you know, there was never anything like, you know, held against anyone. But there was a, probably, really, literally weeks into my tenure at, at, at that time at the jail, I was hired as volunteer coordinator. I went into this health club and I was checking it out to see if I might want to join and you know, I might have gone to an aerobics class or worked out or whatever. And I go into the sauna and uh, I'm sitting in there and there's one other guy in the sauna and uh, he basically you know, starts asking me, like, well, are you new to the area? I'm like, yeah. And, well, where do you work? I'm like, well, I got a job at the jail, volunteer coordinator, and oh, yeah, I've, I've heard about that O'Malley guy, and you know, he's, he's kind of, you know, kind of plugging me for information. Well, of course, it ended up being Mike. <laughs> you know, I, just, I mean, I'm like, you know, okay, you know. So he was, he was quite the, you know, kind of the, like, he was an unbelievable guy, incredibly colorful personality. I mean, when it, when it comes to all the things that he did, between the sailing and the skiing and the and you know his family time and his job, which you know he he usually had more leave, he had to leave like you know you look at the leave amount of leave he had, he hardly ever was gone from that place for more than a week here and there but he he was dedicated to the place and you know we're gonna miss him dearly as a friend and a colleague so uh, I did my best Mike thank you. And now it's our special pleasure and privilege to invite Pat, Cuddy, O'Malley, and their daughter, Megan, to come forward, please. Read the plaque. To the O'Malley family, on behalf of the Vermont Department of Corrections, we would like to express our deepest appreciation for your sacrifice of time with your husband and father, Michael O'Malley. He was our colleague and our friend. We thank you also for your support of Mike's dedication and commitment to the profession of corrections. Your support made a difference. Thank you so much. August 2nd, 1982 to April 15th, 2011, Michael O'Malley, Rutland Probation and Parole District Manager. I have, before I give this one, I have a special plaque that I referred to earlier. It's the Department of Corrections Values and we're going to present this to Megan, because everything I heard about Megan was that she represents those values also. So thank you. I'd just like to say thank you very much on behalf of Mike. Um, he had many families in his life, and the Department of Corrections was certainly one of them. Thank you.